This video is going to be another demonstration of synchronizing two AC generators. We have these two simulated generator stations being spun by induction motors and VFDs. We have pieces of tape put onto the shivs here on the generator shafts. We also have a stroboscope uh, making a flashing light to allow us to visually freeze those pieces of tape and to see the relative positions of those two shafts. We've got the stroboscope set so that that uh, shiv right there, that tape is in clear view. And we're watching this one slowly rotate. So the reason it's slowly rotating is every time the strobe light flashes, we're a little bit further behind where we should be. And so it looks like it's rotating backwards slightly. That's because this one is actually set to spin a little bit slower than that one. I've got the frequency on this VFD set to 60 hertz, and the frequency here is set at 59.4. With slightly different frequencies, and for that reason, slightly slower speed, and it looks like the tape is moving backwards. What we're going to do here is synchronize these generators together using our breaker and monitoring our sync lights here. I'm going to wait until these lights are off, and when, I, when they're off and when the tape is in the right place, I'm going to close the breaker. That will close the circuit and parallel these two generators, at which point they will be electrically coupled together, and then we can check the tape. And what you're going to see is that right now, this tape looks like it's rotating backwards. After we synchronize it, those two pieces of tape will look like they're locked in the same place. That will be the physical proof that we have these two generators synchronized together. So it's, they're going to act as though they're mechanically coupled, even though the only coupling here is electrical. So we're going to come up one more turn here of that piece of tape, and we'll be ready to synchronize. So Curtis, let me know when we're coming up on that point. Yeah, next one. Okay, so I've just closed the breaker, and now what we see is we see these two generators spinning at exactly the same speed. So we have a piece of tape there that appears to be stationary, a piece of tape here that appears to be stationary, and we chose it to lock in in this orientation. We could have chosen any other orientation, it would have worked just as well, but here it's easier to see the two pieces of tape pointed in the same direction. It's more of a dramatic effect. So that is showing us how these two generators are actually in sync with each other, even though they're being driven by two motors that are trying to go at slightly different speeds. So here's my next test. I'm going to take this VFD control right here and slow it down just a little bit more. And we're going to see how well these two generators stay in sync with each other. So I'm going to slow this down just a bit from 59.4 hertz, 59.2. So I've turned down the frequency on this induction motor here, 59.2. You can see the two pieces of tape are still staying synced together. I'm going to slow it down even more. 59.0. They're still synchronized. You may be able to hear the laboring sound of these two motors. and even notice a slight phase shift from one to the other that we didn't see before. What's happening is this here is actually acting as the generator, and this is acting more or less as a motor. It's being powered by this one to try to stay up to speed because they are electrically coupled together. So that's a demonstration of how even though the prime movers here are trying to go at slightly different speeds, due to being closed on the same grid, these two generators are electrically coupled and will stay in sync. Now we can push this even further. If I slowed this down too far, what would happen is this one generator would eventually be pulling so much torque and so much current to drive it as a motor, it would literally uh, pop out of sync. And that's called slipping a pole. Slipping a pole on a generator is something you never ever want to do. In a real power system, you get catastrophic currents that result uh, from that. So I'm not even going to do it in our simulated system here. It's bad news. But I did want to say that if you were to slow down this prime mover much further, you could actually force this to slip a pole and to fall out of sync with the other generator. I especially don't want to do it here because right now we have no overcurrent protection built on the circuit, and so we have no way of detecting electrically a slip pole condition to automatically shut off. I'd have to manually shut off, so I don't want to go there today. But that's a demonstration of synchronized generators. Now watch as I take this prime mover over here and increase its speed back up to 60 hertz. 59.4, 59.6, 59.8. And you'll notice here the phase shift, the amount of phase shift between these two pieces of tape here is less than before. So it actually came closer into true synchronization. And this is, uh, this is laboring less as a generator, and that's laboring less as a motor. They're not having to fight each other as much because their prime movers are now trying to rotate at a closer speed.